from the moment that this event was announced, people started to say Tribe is the team to look out for, and for good reason. And here we are, Flash. We find ourselves one game away from Tribe securing their spot in the finals. But Team Ferox still have a chance. There is always a miracle to be had. Can that miracle happen right here, right now? Got it, that's the second kill of the game going to Ferox. With that, Tribe will go ahead and dip out of the jungle here. Jungle secured. All right, Ferox turning it up. Tribe though, going straight on to Blackcloth. The Mooncloak coming out, but Flicker is not with them right now. This feels like Ferox bit off more than they can chew, though the Anvil's Hammer is actually stacking up against Tribe. They've lost Chuck as the fight begins here. Now Pico still under stealth. Rock Bomber jumps in. He's getting a lot of damage. Rock Bomber stays alive. They've taken three. Tribe falling apart. Max Green will go down as well. What just happened? Team Ferox take four away from Tribe gaining. Joseph, the only member of Tribe to survive, and it's going to be a Black Claw going the way of Ferox. Rockbomb and Yuki, they're gonna try and flank around and this is really smart when you have a Kensei teleporting right onto the back line. Nice block, gonna be oh, able to stop it. it away, but they get started all over. This is an absolutely genius play coming out from Rock Bummer and Yuki, they're just pulling it off perfectly. But though, Truth is still alive. Gonna be trying to back off, trying to get the picks on Papa John. Can he so I guess the block, but I just don't think it's gonna be enough. Picks up an extra kill. Papa John doing a nice amount of plays oh, with that you can flank. Smell the money, Max Man. Oh, I can that. smell the salt. Man, that flank was absolutely beautiful. That was insane. Oh, nice. nice. Is that Go on, okay, Scarf. Nice, Go on, Scarf. Nice, nice. Go on, Scarf. Scarf only. I got the carry. I got Scarf. Get everyone else. Nice. Oh my god. 13 seconds, guys. They don't have damage. They don't have damage for this. Yeah, that's why. Oh, thank god. <laughs> I'm stressing out, dude. Someone go home. Oh, we can win this, we can win this. What the heck? Thanks for the vanguard. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Which one? Yeah, they're taking oh, ghosts. Yeah, they are yeah. taking it. Ulti now, ulti now. Alright. Right. Just go in. Hold. Oh, no. I'm, going I'm item silence, I'm item silence. I'm gonna watch it. The silence? Flicker ulted by the way? Nah, sky sky step. I mean Top lane, top lane, top lane, top lane, and this. Go push that, push that. I'll block it, I'll block it for you guys. Mm-hmm. Body block for Oh my god, GG. Yeah, GG, GG. Yeah, GG. Thank god. Oh, let's go, boys. Uh, oh, my Jeez, in Dude, my hands are shaking up the <laughs> That was the scariest game of my life. Holy. Hey, what? Hey, watching stream, watching John and Yugi fucking pull the rest of that off with fucking Ronnie. Oh, my God, folks. I was about to yell. So loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Hello, Vainglorians! I'm Humanist, joined by Excoundrel, and this is gonna be a great series to start the day off. Excoundrel, we have some action already in the bottom. How about them apples and how you doing? After a dominating performance in the North American Champions League,
We were undoubtedly one of the top four teams in North America. Image though, realistically, you're gonna have a little bit coming from Tony, a little bit coming. Oh my baby! Oh, that's how you start a game! Chugga, 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 chugga. Ah, they got the pain train rolling right here. Team Ferox got me going. We had an unpredictable way of approaching rotations, the laning phase, calls around objectives, and draft, which made it extremely difficult for teams to play against us. Silvernail is going to be locked <laughs> in. Here we go. We've got a game on our hands. Our second Silvernail of the entire VPL finally going to be making another appearance. Ferox has to pick. Do they want no. this Rona? Do they want to go for the oh, late game? No, it's Anka. an Anka. No, Ferox, absolutely. They're just going for the hype composition right now. <laughs> going with all the new heroes, all of the flashy plays. This is going to be a game to behold. I I really want Ferox to do well here with two of the brand new heroes, both of them situational picks. Our ability to capitalize on the smallest mistakes from the enemy and come back from behind was unmatchable. Freeland here, Shade of Talon makes his way down, weapon trans spawning right now, but Ferox are in position. They have this Ghost Wing buff stun up onto Kaz. Kaz is not going to be able to get himself out of here. He will go down very shortly. No, he, the heal's keeping him alive for now. They turn it around, they take down Papa John. It's a disaster at this point for Ferox. Look at the Baron actually getting some damage, but here comes Moji right over the top with this interest, dancing through with nice damage. Can they lock him down? Or oh, he's, he's going kill mental! Kind of able to get a quadra kill for his troubles. Neon Fire with the bottom boom will keep him alive. Ferox turned that, I mean, that was turned around onto Ferox, and Ferox turned it right back around to the vision. Our late game team fighting ability was one of our biggest strengths. They're just going to continue pressuring Pico, trying to do what he can to poke. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Oh, big damage actually coming out from Papa John there, but Archaic is the target that gets low. That's not really the target that's going to be helping you win the fight to take him down. They do get that kill, but immediately Hammers are able to turn it back around. Rona finally getting some good damage in with the red mist, and all of a sudden Ferox has just cleaned out a stun onto the Catherine, and that will be an ace for Team Ferox. Where did this come from? It's not just an ace, it is a massive gold swing back into their favor. 2K after being down, they have got to feel super, super good about that one. We had the team dedication to be anyone, and we were putting in the work behind the scenes to improve our synergy, mechanical capabilities, and knowledge of the game. If we weren't busy grinding as a team in rank, we were playing scrims against teams of the likes of Ace Gaming, Rocks Armada, and Hammers Esports. We wanted to be the best. After years of only having our spot in the ranked leaderboards, to prove we were good enough, we wanted to prove that we too could do great things. Storm a little bit early. Arden is going to secure that one. This could potentially be one of the last fights breaking out here. Gauntlet does come out. Nation's able to make it, but Celeste is not able to get through. Darklon, he's going to be the next to fall as Stun comes through. Bro, they've answered with a couple kills. It looks like Reza is finally going to get this armory and then hopefully go back and help his team defend against the incredibly, incredibly buff uh team Faro that is pushing in right now armory is dropping there's five members here oblivion's coming out there's no block ready and available for box just a couple more seconds he would have had it and team Faro, they might have picked themselves up a second game here it's looking very very close maylene's able to pick up one kill but with four members alive and very healthy this should easily be team Faro picking up not one but two games against ace gaming um, you know, a much better performance than I realistically thought they were going to have. Uh, but very impressive play coming from them overall. They remained calm and collected throughout, you know, both series. Um, and, and they came out and put their best game forward. And, and we can't forget about that just excellent backdoor coming from mm. them during game one. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We're getting very, very late into this game. Uh, late to the point that a single death can determine who yes. is going to win this one. Um, we do see that there's some vision put up by the side of Ace Gaming. Um, and uh, not as...
you know, I, it's not uh, unexpected, but Team Pharrell, this, this might be the game. That's, that's, uh, that's quite the, uh, that's quite the epic back door there. Excellent decision making coming out of those guys. Uh, I, I thought at first they were gonna sneak around behind and just try to get the fight. Nope, they went straight to base. They picked up the kills and that was actually phenomenal execution coming out of those guys. I'm actually really glad I got to see that. In the semi-finals of the North American Champions League, we would meet Tribe, the favorites in the North American scene. Not only that, the current world champions. It was an uphill battle for us. In game 1, they would destroy us 27 to 6 in 19 minutes. Things weren't looking good. However, we were not done yet. No matter how far behind we were, we were a team that never, ever would give up. Now, I mean, what else can they do? Lost Boy Toph getting chased down once again. He's been in this situation before. Gauntlet's been thrown down. Nearly everyone in PSM is not tribe is inside of it now here comes the engagement but there's just so much damage being traded out i really can't tell what's happening this is more just oh, eventually tribe will win out win out these damage traits but it's tar starting to turn around this is looking pretty decently holy crap what what actually happened there How what happened the was what happened was varia <laughs> oh my gosh that was that was something else now we have a game on our hands we have Black Claw spawning is going to be running down the mid lane. They should be able to get that turn and they get to turn on top of the ghost ring. Trying to fight this catch. Yugi decides to go in on the entire team. Anvil's hammer being dropped right there. Gauntlet split up the entire team. This is actually going crazy. Bada boom. Throw, through the Arden to the side, Solar Storm going to rip through uh, and in rejects. But once again, they're starting to win things out. They're starting to win a couple of damage trades. Now it's turning on its head. Old School still incredibly healthy. He's dealing out damage and he does find Oxygen's double kill for the Vario once again. What the heck is this? Gabe Fizzle, he's gonna go down. Look at the timer. This is going to be at the very least an armory, two turrets for certain. Wow. Definitely Varya is shining this game. Anvil's Hammer, Gauntlet, it, you know, Tribe did get the first kill on the Yugi, but again, Varya is just insane. And they're actually gonna take the win That's off it. of this. That's it, dude. Uh, I mean, actually, no, no, there could be, no, actually, I take that back. Is, too that's much game. game, that's game. Winning the third game, reverse sweep against, oh, against Tribe. By completely outclassing Tribe Gaming and team fights. In capitalizing in minor errors, we managed to come from behind after losing game 1 and ultimately take the series home 2-1. to one. This unforeseen outcome would give us hope and made us realize that by working hard and never giving up, we could take on any team in North America, let alone the world. We had our chance to prove it now. We had the chance to show everyone that we were indeed one of the best teams in Vainglory. We had the mechanics, the team dedication, and, well, Yugi. Now, the problem is he sacrificed a couple, <laughs> he sacrificed four minions for his own life, but I mean, that was, I guess, a slowdown oh, push. Got got over the wall. The wall. <laughs> All right. You could get the army without taking the turrets. Yes, end the game, Yugi. <laughs> All right, Yugi, dude, I think he thinks he got eaten by a grump girl. I mean, you shouldn't be. <laughs> Where Pico, is he taunted back, blocks off the trash talk to stay alive. Pico is making some great plays this game. That was a phenomenal block. Next level mechanics. Flicker going to use that moon cloak to start this up, give his team some movement speed to start rotating across the map. He's going to be stunned up, taking him very low. The bottom of the wall, but oh, it's Archibald, but he takes the Archibald through Pico. He's just ping ponging around the map like it's a night check. It does not matter. Pico can he get himself out of this one. He's going to look to go in this and then remain elusive. He's out. Oh my goodness. Clip it. Pecco's shoving this top lane down quite nicely. Look at this AC just going to work. I mean, who could have predicted this type of a result? Neon Fire, after clearing out the wave, will be able to uh, get a little bit of damage onto Pecco, but he's not a real threat. I mean, I get, you'd have to have some other damage source or another source of lockdown. Now, Cause is actually here. Is Pecco trying to turn this? But Papa John's made the rotation as well into a 2v2. Pecco, what's the play? Is he going to netherform detonate over the... 
What are you doing? Is he just full bait? It's a full bait. Oh, He's got a water wall. It's a full bait. Oh my goodness! The jabation is out of control. I can't handle it. He's gonna die. His cause gonna die as well. Sure does look like a dragon's breath from Lost Boy. Burn, baby, burn! I told you it was gonna be a fiery match up here. And a Vanguard on to Tivo. We'll slingshot Tivo back. Tivo's out of it. And at the end, they only lose two, but that didn't feel real good, Excoundrel. Oh, man, this is uh, its looking pretty dire right now for Vision, if, I, if I'm completely honest. Like I said, they have a very clear spike, which really came off the back of a two-item Rona and a tension bow into a Sorrow Blade for Lance, but they are hitting those spikes late for their composition. The Samuel build... Oh, wait a second, I have no idea what Pekko's doing here, but he is going ham. Uh, he's, he's out. I can't believe he's out, but uh, regardless... Going pretty ham there. Teleports back towards his team. Might even get involved in a fight over the other side. What is actually going on right now? Peko with the debate teleportation on in PvP Warrior. He gets no the kill as well. Down. I like. <laughs> but one thing you could never deny was that Yugi truly made a difference. Defeating Tribe in movie-like fashion would give us the momentum and the confidence we needed. We would go on to face Nova Esports in the championship game and defeat them 3-0, crowning us champions. In the eyes of many, winning the North American Champions League was not much of an accomplishment. However, beating Tribe and Nova would give us the confidence we needed. We were ready to grind harder than before. The Vainglory Premier League was quickly approaching, and the World Electronic Sports Games qualifying rounds were coming right after that. We were ready. We were so ready. Welcome to the beautiful city of Las Vegas, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen. We are here with the North American Vainglory Premier League Summer Open. We're broadcasting live from the PokerGo studio at the Aria Resort and Casino. And we're ready to get into more 5v5 action. My name is Munchballs. I'll be hosting the desk. And I'm going to be joined, as ever, by Tasty Bacon as we head into our North American segment of the day. Let's talk about the PokerGo format for you guys. There are five weeks of play starting this week with the playing round. This is just to qualify for our round of 16. That's where the major matches are going to be happening. Five weeks will be panning out, and at the end of those five weeks, we'll have decided a champion for North America and one for Europe. Let's take a look at our Dollar Shave Club prize pool, as we have $5,000 on the line for each region. $3,000 is the top prize per region. So here we have our updated bracket. So I'll talk you through what's been happening across the course of today. Welcome everybody to the Vainglory Premier League Summer Open. We're in week number two now and we're broadcasting live from Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here in the PokerGo studio in the Aria Resort and Casino and we're ready to jump back onto Sovereign's Rise for our North American action. The games continue to come. Obviously, we've just seen Lemon Squeezy versus Hammers, but we're going to be moving on into our next game now. It's going to be Ferox versus Minigunners, and this actually should be quite an interesting game because there's quite a few players we don't know on these rosters, yeah. but there's also a couple of names that are sort of Vainglory veterans. Yeah, I mean, you look at the side of Ferox, and you see Nate, the first name that pops out immediately is Lost Boy Toph. There's also Shamu, who is known for having, you know, his a rather successful YouTube channel. Uh, we've seen a couple teams kind of 
bring in these YouTube channels and try and make a run at yeah. it. Uh, we'll see if they'll be successful, and but then Pico I'm, as well. And I'm sure they're going to have the fans behind them as well. Yeah, yeah You'd absolutely. expect those subscribers <laughs> to be cheering for that team. Let's take a look at our play big head-to-head -head for this matchup. Ferox up against the Mini Gunners. And we've yeah. got guys like Lost Boy Toff, and you've got guys um, like Pico as well, who even recently as the preseason, Pico was making play. Papa John's another one of these players that, you know, in the preseason, the got, Papa John. got a little bit of action in, in the preseason. It was for Hammers, so it was in a losing effort, but he was one of the few, like, bright spots of Hammers a lot of people felt in the few games that he did play. So I have been informed, unfortunately, that our final series of the game is not going, final series of the day, sorry. I can't, I, I think my, my voices just seem to be failing me, or my brain, I think. Let's take a look at our bracket, or both. as we are gonna see Team Ferox are gonna be progressing with a default victory, unfortunately. Uh, Mini Gunners, I believe one of their players was uh, unable to get onto the game here tonight, which means the team, unfortunately, is going to have to forfeit, I guess, none of their subs available to jump in. Yeah, very unfortunate. I was really looking forward to this matchup because I, one, I just really want to see Team Ferox get onto the rise, but again, I felt like this was going to be a very good matchup on paper, but unfortunately, yeah. we're not going to get to see it. However, that does mean Hammers versus Ferox. Yeah, that's looking pretty juicy. So I'll just remind you guys, this is to fight for their spot in the top four right now. This is the flagship match for today. Hammers up against Team Ferox. I think it's about time that we jump on into this one though. Hammers against Ferox. They're fighting for top four. They're fighting for their right to stay in for that prize pool. We'll see who's going to be able to take this one. So I'm going to pass it over to our casters. It's going to be Flash X. It's actually going to taste the bacon. Game number one, Hammers Force against Team Ferox. This is perhaps going to be one of the closest matchups we have had thus far. Both these teams very, very evenly matched. If the Rona can succeed, I think they're going to have a lot of success on this one, but it's all about setting up this Anka. Here comes our first fight of the game, though, as it is going to be everyone kind of posturing up for this Crystal Treant. Not really willing to hard commit. The Drifting Dark's gonna get a lot of damage down, but all of it's getting eaten by the Treant. There's an Impale going in. Githian Wall's not gonna land any stuns. The Crystal Treant does go over to the Rona, but now they have to escape. They go one for one thus far. Anka, the first casualty, but Captain falls as well. Moji and Rock Bomb are low. Shamu also gonna get dropped very low. He's gonna be the next target and will fall. So when all is said and done, it's going to be a two for one in favor of the side of Hammers so that you can prevent these clean objectives takes that Hammers have been looking for. They've gotten themselves two Ghost Wings. They're looking for Black Claw now. It's getting pretty low, but here is Ferox to defend. A Gauntlet's going to go down. That's going to be a huge Githian Wall stun into the Gauntlet Wall. And now the fight has broken it down, and Rona is just going to drop nothing to help keep this Rona alive in the middle of the fights. And Hammers are turning this one right back onto Ferox. They're chasing down two, three kills, looking for Pico now. He's going to get to the safety of his turret. But that was a three for zero in favor of Hammers. And now they just turn their attention right back to the Black Claw. The Ghost Wing Barrier buff, so critical for Hammers to get the upper hand in that team fight. They use it to their advantage. They quickly turned on a Ferox. Pico might be looking for a steal. It could, but he's not gonna find it. Instead, it will be his life that is stolen away. Papa John goes down shortly after. And now with Black Claw pushing it down the mid lane, this is Ferox on the back foot. I think that that's a great call coming out of Hammers, definitely maximizing their opportunity right here. They understand that all of Ferox is in that mid lane. They're just gonna continue pressuring Pico, trying to do what he can to poke. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Oh, big damage actually coming out from Papa John there, but Archaic is the target that gets low. That's not really the target that's going to be helping you win the fight to take him down. They do get that kill, but immediately Hammers are able to turn it back around. Rona finally getting some good damage in with the Red Mist, and all of a sudden, Ferox has just cleaned out a stun onto the Catherine, and that will be an ace for Team Ferox. Where did this come from? It's not just an ace, it is a massive gold swing back into their favor. 2k after being down, they have got to feel super, super good about that one. 
uh, Lorelai is able to find a great water wall. All that damage can be completely negated and is definitely a very risky play. Yeah, well, that's also one of the things that Ferox has to think about is that water wall. It's going to be used to save a carry. So maybe you choose one, start to get the damage out, wait for the water wall, and then immediately switch targets. It can be very difficult to have that level of target selection in the midst of a fight. But if you can, they can maybe take advantage of that cooldown. A nice Githian wall It's going to stop Hammers in the track, but Pico is not involved yet. He's going to come in late, and that could be massive for them because he's untouched, just cleaning house on the back line and Ferox are finding the fights. They are turning this game on its head, Flash, as they find four more kills. Level the lone member to escape this fight. Rock Bomber is looking for him, but he's not going to find him. But it's a four for zero in favor of Ferox. It's actually going to be Rock Bomber taking down the Malin, and now they're going to be looking to continue this hunt into the midst of the team. Rona is just holding on so well now that it's gotten later in the game. A great Githian wall is going to find a stun. They're trying to take down Level or Ali Peterson. They don't really care which one they get. They're just going to take them both. And Black Claw is still pushing Team Ferox. 19 to 18 now on the kills. They've gotten the kill lead. They're on to the armory. How far are they going to look to push this? Looks like they want to take this top lane as well and just break this base wide open. I think that that's a great decision. Very calculated, not overstepping. They understand these death timers. Mixi on the Malin coming back online. Gwen very shortly behind them. They have an armory. They have breached the base. There's only one turret left standing for the side of hammers. He mentioned those breaking point stacks are going to build up and he's going to be able to survive for so long and do so much damage in the midst of these fights. But this is exactly the way Ferox plays. Like we mentioned it on the death, their early game, not the strongest, but their late game team fighting. They've caught hammers out completely, diving into their base while hammers were still in the middle of the map. Hammers have finally recalled, but they're going to lose at least an army off of this. How much more? Here comes the red mist spinning around on top of hammers. The armory has fallen, but Pico and Mushy, they're still looking to try and survive and get some damage back. Big Gethian Wall's gonna find a stun, and there is so much damage being done to the side of hammers. Rock Bomber is still nearly full health as they find another kill, and it's now Moline trying to be a wall of defense, but not really gonna be able to survive too much longer. Has to run out of the base to try and recall, but Ferox, they are on to the Bane Crystal. There is not enough damage left from Hammers to stop this, and Team Ferox will come from behind and take game number one. That was some beautiful vainglory. We knew Ferox was gonna be good. I don't know that I re realized they were gonna be this good. That was absolutely phenomenal stuff. Let's go ahead and throw it back to the desk. Welcome to game two between Team Ferox and Hammers Esports. My name's Tasty Bake, and I'm joined by Humanist. I mean, my name's Flash Flashex. I'm joined by... No, I'm Humanist. I'm joined by Flash X. We got it. I'll, I'll be joined by Flash very shortly. Churnwalker getting things chained up in the jungle. Ali Peterson dropping the verse of judgment. Idris taking down the sky. Hammers falling apart at the seams as Ferox step it up a notch, turn it up a notch. And uh, they have, Hammers seem to be in a little bit of trouble. That was a great engage by Ferox. They're now flipping things completely on their head, taking down another turret in the mid lane stealing away this crystal tree now as well they have got to be feeling good ferox though looking for the first black claw capture of the game hammers rotating to get in position to contest they found Pico. Pico Zen. He splits with the Mirage. Hard to lock this guy down. Well, Solar Storm will connect. Pico's got to get back. That's the fountain coming out of Chamu. We'll keep him alive. Black Claw was unleashed. And Rock Bomber's in deep. Make she's down. Suri Strike from the sky to try and reposition. Impale lands onto the Adagio as Grumchoff falls. A clean take by Moji. Now Ali Peterson left for dead as hammers are falling apart at the seams. Has that Ghost Wing buff looking for a target? He's found Mixi. Mixi, this could be bad for you. He's in, he's got the blades damage coming out. I don't put Mixi down at 30% health, but quickly backup arrives. 
As you see, this hook and chains coming out. Papa John's got the trust pass onto Adagio to set up the impale. Mirage comes out. Try to keep track of this Anka through this fight. Pico is in deep. Well, Rock Bomber just spins all over him, baby. Archaic is stuffed up, so he's going to pull him back to the healing platform. Is this going to be enough? Slumbering Husk procs off. Rona's able to get out of it. Okay, that's how you know you lost the game. My goodness, Team Ferox, this is a dominating performance right here. Absolutely putting on a show. Hammer's Esports, I mean, I thought this is a team to be reckoned with, but Team Ferox, holy wow. Team Ferox stepping it up big time, definitely drafting to their strengths. The question is, how deep do these hero pools go and how will they survive? They are in the semi-finals now. We'll go ahead and throw it back to the desk. You know, we talked about the fact that Ferox is so strong late game. But you know who else is really strong late game? One of the best facets of Silver Nail, especially going into the Scrum Trap matchup, is with that double shot, he takes off two of those stacks of living armor immediately. Moshi getting caught out of position in that mid lane, though. Yeah, honestly, like I looked, I thought because everybody was stacked on top of each other, I thought there were three heroes, but there were actually four, and there's no way he's gonna live through that. It feels like a pretty classic tribe game. It's it, they don't always start out like just lightning fast, but slowly but surely get this advantage, and they've found most G. Most G will be respawning. Uh, it was just an absolute wrecking. He has no defense. He took a solar storm straight to the face. Chuck has Spellfire online. That's a lot of damage. Old school doing what he can to steal away these treants. He is going to find it successfully make Pico use his Mirage. In old school, still going to be able to secure both of those camps. Rock Bomber wrapped up by three of uh, Tribe here. Joseph, Gabe Vizzle, and Max Green easily finding that kill. Nothing comes out in return, and all I feel is pressure across the map by Tribe onto Ferox. Such strong macro play coming out of Tribe. He's getting the ambient gold. I mean, he's not letting it go for free, but Pico in a little bit of trouble right here. Forced to Mirage, unfortunately. Uh... Questionable at best. He tried to go for the capture. I, I think Pico is known for those high risk, high reward plays. Ferox, on the other hand, you know, some some good uh, heads up play in the top lane. Oh, Max, See he's pointing back to Max. Max Bomber. <laughs> Max Bomber. Got him. In the meantime, though, Tribe continues to apply pressure in the mid lane. Oblivion's going to come out, doesn't put anybody to sleep. In the meantime, that was a taunt coming through into the Solar Storm. As Tribe are pretty much having their way with Team Ferox right now. Tribe can do whatever they want. Chamu needs to look for a huge forced accord if they want even a shot at getting back into this. But unfortunately, Ferox is just too low. They can't do anything at this point. The turrets of Ferox are starting to drop like dominoes. You see, most just like completely just hugging the edge of that drifting dark this is one of the most shut down samuels that i've seen probably in the last two or three weeks samuel definitely a hero that excels in the early game has not excelled here gabe school is starting things off and that will be Moshi going down to start this fight a little bit of mirage out of pico as he tries to apply some damage and reposition they will spread damage across tribe an impale turn around nice job by papa john do they have uh, anything else to follow up? Doesn't look like they're gonna get on target. And they gotta be careful because Chuck still dishing out significant damage, especially if they move forward and that one of those Helios goes supernova. Ferox, no, they had a huge forced accord onto Chuck. Chuck should have fallen. The problem was Rock Bomber threw out his old impaled Chuck back right where he came from, completely negating the forced accord. A call has to be made. This is a tense situation here, but the jump in from old school kind of distracting Ferox and Blacklaw will go over to the way of Tribe Gaming, secured up by the Celeste. And it looks like it's a little slice dice as Pico gets torn apart. School trying to get over the wall. He'll play himself a little bit. That's okay. They're under the turret, but Tribe just tanking up this damage. They don't care. 
they're gonna get essentially are they gonna get everybody no channel will be able to get out of this will he no he won't all oh, those 25 breaking point stacks for school this is now 12 to 2 15 minutes in plus black claw marching down the lane this could be good night team ferox <laughs> It very well could be. Tribe is together. The only one that was gave Vizzle. Certainly, Ferox will be losing their armory. I, if I was Tribe, I would probably rotate out after this Rock Bomber. Starting to pick up a few stacks on that breaking point. Yes, they are going to rotate out. Find a little bit of a reset. Pico might look to chase on this Anka, though. He's trying to make something happen here. Max Green's taking quite a bit of damage. It's not like... A priority target, I would say. But anything at this point where you can get a kill would be great. The jump in, Shimmer Blaze there. Nice job by Piku to follow. Rock Bomber did set that one up. Slumbering Husk online, so he'll be able to withstand a little bit of burst damage. Tribe, it looks like they were waiting for the Force to cord. They've done a great job. Old School, he's able to get onto the Samuel. Samuel deleted off the bat now. Four versus five. Silvernail just turns and runs away, but he is not fast enough. He's taken down. That's two for Tribe Gaming. Looks like it'll be at least three as uh, Lance is left behind Joseph doing a little jig there as Tribe Gaming just taking everything that they want off of the map. No fear here. Kind of outclassed, honestly, in game number one, and I hope that we see something new coming out from Ferox in game number two. But let's have a bit of a reminder of how these teams got to this stage in the tournament. These guys are both top four teams, and Tribe kind of waltzed on in honestly they 2-0 toxic peace very convincingly and the same thing happened against rampage gods very comfortable wins we even saw old school pretty much 1v5ing in the game against rampage gods on the flip side for ferox their path to the finals was a little bit easier in the fact that they had in a some default ways. win thrown in there that that's really the all well, i was going with that they had yeah. a default win there but then the 2-0 versus hammers looking very good in that series but hammers is not tried no. And let's bear in mind, that was an upset for Ferox to take out Hammers. Hammers, while they had a couple of roster changes and things, still a very strong squad, still a squad to be feared. And Ferox did a fantastic job, especially to get a 2-0 in that mm -hmm. series as well. Phenomenal stuff. But as you rightly say, Hammers does not equal Tribe. From the moment that this event was announced, people started to say Tribe is the team to look out for and for good reason. And here we are, Flash. We find ourselves one game away from Tribe securing their spot in the finals. But Team Ferox still have a chance. There is always a miracle to be had. Can that miracle happen right here, right now? It is going to be Rock Bomber with Kensei. Kensei has been a monster. I think he's won every game that he's been in today. So that's something the Tribe's going to have to be very careful of. But I think that they're feeling just as confident having old school on that kinetic. Oh, yeah, for sure. They got to be feeling confident. But like you said, I, I, I think the Lyra makes a lot of sense in this game, shutting down the mobility that can come out of these Team Ferox heroes. I'm excited to see Varya this game and maybe what she can accomplish. First blood, though going uh going the way of team ferox that was a bit of a surprise there's a great pickup by ferox on a max green in the bottom lane max green gets their tribe are as five in the middle of this map and team ferox are, are respecting this they are you know they they got that first blood they want to make sure they're not over extending but i think that they've got the stronger early game composition it is chuck in old school ramp up i, I think the tribe so has the tankier front line Cool in a bad place, or is it Pico? Vanguard onto the Pico, they stay on old school. They've got it, that's the second kill of the game going to Ferox. With that, Tribe will go ahead and dip out of the jungle here, jungle secured. All right, Ferox turning it up. Uh, really just across the map, Team Ferox is continuing to apply a little bit of pressure. There uh, might pick up another kill in the top lane. Whoa! Though. I mean, this is a rotation from Chuck up into the top lane to apply pressure onto the turret. I thought, hey, this is a smart rotation from Tribe. 3v1, they're going to take this turret. Pico trades one for one and keeps the turret up. That was awesome. One thing about Ferox thus far, and I was going to hold that thought, they're on to Chuck. Chuck, is he able to get back? Yes, but just barely turns around with a solar storm. That was significant damage coming out on Emoji and Jano. Is that they weren't controlling the vision. Like... They've been sitting in a couple of brushes where they, they actually had uh, a tribe had scout cams down and I'm not sure Team Ferox actually realized that so they're giving away their positioning and tribe just able to make the smart decisions with that information.
Okay, Vizzle did have to pop his Crucible on this Lyra. Ferox still has their Fountain. This might be the opening they want to try and force something, but Tribe, the much cleaner, much tighter rotations grouped is five. They, uh, okay, they're they separating Ferox here a little bit, but Ferox might look to just sandwich them here in the middle. Pico able to slip out. It looks like Old School found him, but they won't connect. Grumshaw taunted back, stunned up against the wall. Is the MPL going to land? It will not. Anvil's hammer has flown out here. Now Team Ferox looking to turn it around. Pico on the front side of this fight doing nice AoE damage. Nobody has dropped just yet. Now the tribe want to go ahead and turn this around. Looks like they do. Joseph's in, but this is Kinsey jumping right back in. Rock Bomber, he's down. Bomber of a fight right there. But with the Grumshaw, they take down the Celeste. This is a bloody little fight. You don't want to go under turret just yet, do you, team? Root on a channel. He's down. Port over the wall. Gabe Bissell with the Bright Bulwark will secure the kill. Now Moji, can you make some god plays? Won't happen. That's the ace coming through as Tribe with the five kills now find themselves up six to five right under the eight minute mark but the gold lead starting to be closed and tribe doing what they can to swing it back in their favor but ferox despite tribe having the ghost wing buff are going to get the first turret of the game i like it i mean they're still looking for objectives that's a clean call they take the turret now maybe looking for more i mean max green not the easiest target to take down they still get aggressive onto Max. They're just going for the T2 turret. So this is the call. And I don't think anybody actually makes the rotation over there to help him. We also have engaged in the top side of the map where Pico, is he taunted back, blocks off the trash talk to stay alive. Pico is making some great plays this game. That was a phenomenal block. Next level mechanics. Flicker going to use that moon cloak to start this up, give his team some movement speed to start rotating across the map. He's going to be stunned up, taking him very low. The bottom of the wall, but oh, it's Archibald, but he takes the Archibald through Pico. He's just ping ponging around the map like it's a night check. It does not matter. Pico can he get himself out of this one. He's going to look to go in this and then remain elusive. He's out. Oh my goodness. Clip it. That was absolutely phenomenal out of Pico, giving his team enough room to take the tier two turret in the bottom lane old school looking to equalize in the top the turret going to fall pico doing what he can to try and take him down but old school dealing quite a bit of damage right now i feel like team ferox need to fight from range especially moji well he winds up this anvil's hammer Let's see if he can get the Stormforge Spear from range because he has maxed A right now. Gauntlet Wall stuns up Joseph. There's the jump in with the Path of Ronin Rock Bomber. He's isolated once again and it goes down. That is not what you're looking for, Ferox. Now, Arcane Passage in from Tribe Gaming. They're out for Blood Moji on a sliver of health. Will be able to get himself away. Papa John trying to zone for his team, but you got to be careful. 15 breaking point stacks still on old school. Mid turret will go down as Tribe take that fight and the the turret they'll move down maybe for ghost they're just going to secure this up well, it looks like it he understands when to get stacks he understands when to go in pico trying to get a little bit of a cheeky steal i don't think it's going to happen mm, let's see can it can he get the cheeky steal with the oh, it's not going to happen back over the wall papa john he's out of there they lose pico but go swing over to tribe gaming and with that it's going to put them just slightly ahead of net worth but up eight to five in the overall kill score black claw online tribe not hesitating at all they understand that rock bombers down in the bottom lane forcing him to recall in order to try and contest this, this is going to be a big push coming out of Tribe. They do secure it. Pico in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, Pico definitely needs to live here. Uh, I was wondering if Old School was going to like try to chase him down, but doesn't appear to be doing so. The rest of his team is going to go ahead and move back to the mid lane where Black Claw is marching his way forward. Winds up for that big breath just burning down that. Man, that is so much damage that on the, the first... Uh, time it hits these structures with that team ferox trying to set up looking for a good position bulwarks down papa john a little bit overextended pico needs to join the fight they don't have moon cloak and this feels like it's just a full defensive uh, play here coming out of ferox uh nothing that uh tribe is new to they're ready to run away with this game indeed now 
They've found Pico. He's on the backside of Chuck, but does Team Ferox collapse with him? But they're starting to start to fight old school. Slumbering Husk was procced off. Old school now to 12 breaking point stacks as he just stands his ground. But Papa John looking uh look, looking for Chuck along with Avaria on the back of the fight. They will be able to take down the Celeste, but Varia drops as well. Joseph and Max Green chase down Pico. Pico will drop a little trash talk coming out. Couldn't handle the trash talk, Flash. And Chama, he's gonna be chased down as well. Uh, it'll take a little longer than they thought, but Max Green will be able to secure that easy impale and right into the Ghost Wing. Tribe, though, going straight on to Black Claw. The Mooncloak coming out, but Flicker is not with them right now. This feels like Ferox bit off more than they can chew with all the Anvil's Hammer is actually stacking up against Tribe. They've lost Chuck as the fight begins here. Now Pico still under stealth. Rock Bomber jumps in. He's getting a lot of damage. Rock Bomber stays alive. They've taken three. Tribe falling apart. Max Green will go down as well. What just happened? Team Ferox take four away from Tribe gaining. Joseph, the only member of Tribe to survive, and it's going to be a Black Claw going the way of Ferox. Tribe had, oh, it was a five on four advantage for Tribe and they still took the L giving Black Claw over to Ferox. I don't think this Black Claw is going to last very long. Hopefully Ferox just pulls the trigger and goes top lane because right now they are wasting quite a bit of time. Yeah, they are hesitating quite a bit. Like that, yeah, that was not a clean shot call. I mean, you could see half the team wanted to go mid, the other half kind of wanted to stay up in top. In the end, the T1 is the only turret that goes down in the top here. Granted, that was still a team fight win and two turrets out of that. So they got to feel good about it. Tribe, though, they, they, they are positioned much better. They, they, they need to just be able to have the shot call to kite in these team fights. And uh, I don't know that there's going to be much Ferox is going to be able to do. We'll see if uh, Ferox can make me eat my words. I mean, if anybody can, it would have to be Ferox. <laughs> I mean, the, the last team fight, like everybody did contribute, but I gotta say like, Tribe was stacked up on each other and that the, the Anvil's Hammer just rained, like it chunked through Tribe. It was actually quite effective. I, I would really like to see Tribe just bait it. They, they all group up, stand on top of each other there. Gabe uh knows that arden will gauntlet in that situation and then if they can just crucible straight out of it, it should be pretty good ghost wing going down the moon cloak coming out this is a nice moon cloak into position max green with the githian wall off the bat they want to get onto the back lines they want chuck but they can't get there just yet the arcane passage kind of trolling them out a little bit nice three-man impale right up against the wall here great job by max to control the fight thus far everybody on ferox dropping low but nobody's died just yet rock bombers in but a bada boom we'll go ahead and peel him off of chuck moshi's down papa john as well looks like rock bomber has to to just run chama is going to drop the max screen he will be dropping here shortly there you go pico avoids the impale all he can do is run as well in fact it looks like rock bomber was cleaned up that's four heroes down for ferox tribe take a phenomenal fight that's exactly what i said tribe had to do they executed it perfectly they allowed old school and chuck to just run backwards gabe with the phenomenal bright board to stop them tribe going to be ending this game moving on into the finals taking the clean 2-0 victory over over team ferox but ferox certainly making them work for it no doubt about it tribe one of the best teams we've ever seen in vainglory putting on a show for us here taking the series 2-0 they'll be moving on to the finals to face up against nova this was incredibly impressive stuff i love to see these guys come in and play hard ferox put up a great fight they shouldn't be ashamed. We came well prepared and with the right mindset into the tournament. Unfortunately, we lacked the execution needed to defeat Tribe this time around. We played really sloppy and made a numerous amount of mistakes. Our aspirations were up there, but our focus was down here. The better team ultimately came out on top and would continue through the bracket to the championship game. It sucked to lose like that after putting in so much work behind the scenes. Now all we could hope for was to at least be able to defeat Vision Gaming in the third place match and take home $500. I guess it was at least something but of course we were not satisfied. So now we turned our attention to WESG.
G. We knew we had to do it this time around. It was looking like it was the last tournament in Vainglory Esports history. So we knew this was pretty much our last chance. No, we can fight. I don't know what's happening. It's Talas, it's Talas. Oh, we won the fight. Nice. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Oh my god. That was the weirdest fight ever, actually. That's like a force fight. I thought I screwed up because I accidentally went in front of them instead. Woof!